All right, everybody, welcome to KC Happy Hour, episode number 28 here on this Tuesday evening, February 1st. Of course, my name is Xander Clements, your host here for the show. We've got a couple of our regular crew here. We've got a couple really uh, cool special guests that I'm excited to have on the show here tonight. One of them will be joining us a little bit later. That's John Seglum with Precision Performance Karting. After our first commercial break, he'll join us uh, as we kind of start to preview the CKNA South event upcoming in Monticello and how the four cycle world has uh, gotten ready to get back going after that big winter national event they had in Jacksonville to start the year. And of course, 206 racing at the Rock Cup Florida Winter Tour. Club racing starting to get going across the south uh, of the U.S. And uh, of course, speaking of the south of the U.S., the Southwest had the Challenge of the Americas over the weekend. And we've got a few guests from that. So first, let's go ahead. We'll bring in on a, a few of our regular uh, cast members. Brandon Jarscrack's here live from Homestead, Florida in the hotel room with some kind of different uh, roommates this week. We'll see yeah. how long it stays here. They're, they're questionable. Yeah, we're not sure. We, they may end up featuring on the show at some point. We've got Paulie Massimino, who is just back from at the Challenge of the Americas event. And while we do have one more special guest that will be joining us besides the one we have right now, Jake Drew joins us live from his Arkham and Art Series West shop. Jake, uh, obviously hot off a heck of a weekend for yourself. Your boss, Gary Carlton, is supposed to be joining us. He's worked on a bit of tech difficulties, but Jake, we'll go to you first. We'll go to Paulie, who was out there just wrenching. Uh, you were actually on the racetrack mopping up and uh, 100 cc senior <laughs> yeah i was i uh, had the opportunity to come out and have some fun um we uh showed up a little bit later than everybody else only got there for friday practice but uh by the end of the day we were rolling pretty quick and then uh kind of went through the weekend with breeze and uh pretty much handed out and took home some wins and we were joking right before we brought you on the show here tonight um, about trying to get you out east to run some more races. I know your schedule's still up in the air, both on the car stuff and the go kart stuff. Now you're in the points, so you got to run as many as you can of the Coda races. But you're looking for what should be another pretty good karting schedule this year, too. Hopefully, yeah, for sure. I'd like to snag a couple uh, handful of races this year. Just trying to, I mean, you look at the West schedule and it's only uh, eleven races, so I'm looking to fill up my weekends as fill up as many weekends as I can, stay in the seat and stay sharp. So um, always love getting back in the cart and look forward to doing that a few times this year. And Pauly, you were working. Hopefully you've learned how to work the computer a little better. Another weekend under your uh, belt here for Brandon. How was your week for RPM? Yeah, I didn't really know what I was doing out there. No, just, <laughs> just joking. No, uh, I had a good time with the, the RPM boys. Uh, did a little video and data for them. Uh, it was I thought it was going to be uh, some nice weather, but no, it's pretty windy and cold. I got uh, wind burn all over my face. But other than that, no, I had a good time. Watched some races, helped out some kids, and uh, got a few podiums under the tent. What is going on? Uh, <laughs> it's already start. Uh, the, the shout out to, to Tony there. Paulie, you were saying Tony. hi to him before. Any words to Tony? Should, should he keep that up the whole broadcast right there? Something behind Brandon? Yeah, I mean, I, I think you should keep it up. I love Tony. He's a character. So keep it up, Tony. I love you. <laughs> well, we do have, I believe, our uh, our other special guest here for the night, Mr. Gary Carlton joins the show. Gary, thank you so much for joining us. Did we have your uh, connection all sorted out here? Um, I guess. Can you hear me? Yeah, we got you. We got all you, right. man. How was your weekend? Obviously, I, I talked to you over the phone. You were like, man, if every weekend goes that good, that'd be uh, an awesome year and to make job a whole the life a whole lot easier, man. You guys racked up. Yeah, no, it was a really good weekend across all fronts, obviously. Um, super happy how the development and everything has gone with all the carts and the new models. Came out with two new two new models for this year, for, one for the tag and one for the shifter, and they both really showed really strong and uh, got race wins with both of them in separate categories. So it was really good, really good. Yeah, right before you came on, I was trying to spend your money for you and uh, see if we could egg and goat Jake into running more races. But uh, obviously, <laughs> you've got him for Coda, um, and uh, you know points leading that points lead with Kyle. I mean, he swept the two headline senior classes, which is great to start. But um, you know, one of the the big things, obviously, still everybody in the industry is experiencing across the board is the supply chain and and how crazy it is just to get product overseas and back and forth and even across the U.S. How much? Has it taken up your time just getting everything together? And how, like, were you nervous at all that you were going to get the product in time for the first round? Uh, I mean, honestly, we were we were actually trying to get the product before Super Nationals. And um, obviously, that did not happen. And so we got it about two weeks before this race. And it's kind of a big reason why we scrapped the whole Florida program for this year, just because 
we didn't have the material in time. Um, but yeah, it's obviously difficult. I mean, and I think unfortunately I've come into an import business at the absolutely worst time to do it. But um, I mean, we were able to get the carts ready. Obviously we didn't have any problems with anything on track. Um, I think I was telling the carting new guy, news guys, I mean, it was the first time that we've had all the pieces all in, in one spot. I mean, normally when we were testing all the, the things that we were developing throughout the year, we only had one piece at a time. So it was the first time we, um, first time we had it all t together in one spot. And luckily you know, there was no problems with anything, you know, being with how the chassis performed and just a little bit new bits and pieces. There was no reliable reliability issues or anything of the sort. So, I mean, all in all, a hugely successful weekend for our brand and, and for our new models. And I know that Sonny finally got to take a, a vacation uh, over the, the break after Supernats. Uh, I think it was after Supernats. You got to go to Hawaii. When's the last time you've taken a vacation or a little time off here? Can you remember that? Was it before the business? Uh, yeah. I mean, like today I took off. I mean, I slept in this morning and then naturally they had to do all like my home work and meaning like laundry and everything that you put off that, uh, getting ready for the races, but no, I, as a team owner, I, I, it goes for everyone. I mean, anyone in that works in the industry, being a team owner or brand owner or importer or anything, I'm sure, especially nowadays, um, the way they have the schedules. I mean, I know maybe for the drivers, they want to be racing all the time, but I, I'm a strong advocate for no races in December and in January. <laughs> Gotcha. Well, um, you know, Jake, you, you, you've had a good weekend on the product and you were obviously really impressive uh, at Supernats. Um, now that you've got, you know, more guys to be a leader with under the 100cc stuff and they're actually able with all the product to be able to be on the same program. Um, were you able to, to do that and help a lot this this weekend across the tent? Uh, I mean, I tried a bit to uh, give my feedback and give some advice to some of our junior drivers and even my teammate and uh with liam and i think um you know we showed throughout the weekend that the success was growing and the the momentum was growing for the other people too i mean uh liam ran with me for a while in the final on sunday um we picked up the win in junior with preston and that was good um our other drivers uh keegan and ryan were running strong towards the end of the weekend so i think we can uh keep building that momentum throughout the year and everybody's going to be uh running pretty strong and then, Paulie, we had talked to before the show uh, last week, before you flew out there, that you'd never been out that way. I know, Brandon, I don't think you've ever run at Tucson. I've never been out there. But everyone says how well the track races because it doesn't really have, like, as many stop-and-go corners from the passing zones. Granted, the finals were pretty cut and clear. But, um, Jake, you've grown up racing there. It, does that rank up pretty high as, like, one of the favorite tracks? Yeah, it's pretty fun. It's um, <clears throat> it's a different style of track than we're I think we're usually used to. I mean, the amount of – flow to the circuit and just how the high speeds and everything it's it's really fun to just turn laps on in general um racing wise was it's pretty good to race around um it's super wide tons of room everywhere uh it just makes it pretty easy to come through the field like we had to on saturday and uh yeah it's super enjoyable every time i get to go to tucson Gary, you you grew up as a West Coast kid. Uh, how many times have you run there? How did you know? How do you like going to that racetrack? And how does it differ to like even some of the Cali circuits you grew up on? So I, I mean, this is dating myself now, but I was actually <laughs> out there for the very first race in 2006 when uh, they had the Stars Karting Championship, um, the first round of the West Coast Series. Went out there, and I mean, naturally, that track I think is one of the best in in the in the states honestly just with the flow and i mean the let's i wouldn't say the facility is you know not like a gopro but the the track itself the pavement of the track is really good and the flow of the track is really good and when i raced we actually ra ran in the clockwise direction now they run it always in the counterclockwise direction but i think it's kind of a hidden gem i mean i i know pro tour has been out there um maybe once or twice i personally didn't race out there but like I said, back, I was there for the very first race in 06, and, and the track's not gotten any worse. I mean, they've done improvements to the facility and everything. And to be honest, I mean, it's kind of a bummer that places like Pro Tour don't go out there or we don't have any, like, big West Coast races anymore. I mean, the, the far as west we go for the Pro Tour goes is, is Utah, which is kind of a, a shame, and it makes it hard for people like 
myself that are here in NorCal or even the SoCal people that, I mean, we just got to travel so far to go to the pro tours now. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's uh, it's a hike. I know uh, Paulie said he was a little bit wind burn. It looked really windy out there. It's obviously cold a little bit in January. How did you hold up? You, your face a little bit red when you were driving home yesterday? Yeah, 100%. I mean, I think it's natural. I mean, it doesn't matter where we go. And that's kind of the whole <laughs> whole thing about why we probably shouldn't be racing in January. If you look over in Europe, it's, you know, zero degrees Celsius. If you go anywhere else in the uh, – in the U.S., I mean, even Florida, I mean, you get rained out or you get there's here in the West Coast, we have either winds or rain. It's cold. I mean, January is probably not a good month to be racing go-karts, to be honest. <laughs> For sure. I mean, it was it was chilly. Jake, was there any sessions you were putting the gloves on the exhaust pipe after or having a few blue knuckles? Oh, for sure. Every morning my hands were <laughs> – I couldn't even get the gloves off. <laughs> it was pretty bad. Well, we're going to take our first commercial break here of the night. We'll come back a little bit more here with Jake and Gary. Of course, later in the show, John Seglum will be joining us. So, guys, stick with us. We have a little bit of news to drop. Of course, in the post as well, we're going to be dropping uh, at the end of the show tonight the first look at our St. Petersburg uh, T-shirt that we'll be having a little bit later on. So stick with us here, guys. Casey Happy Hour rolls on. Our first commercial break. We'll come back. Gary Carlton, Jake Drew, Paulie Massimino, Brandon Jarscrack, all stick with us. KC Happy Hour is presented by Precision Performance Karting. PPK is the exclusive South Florida dealer for Coyote Motorsports kart racing chassis and Coyote's newest distributor. However, owner John Seglum and Coyote Motorsports' relationship spans across numerous decades in the sport, meaning that you've got years of winning expertise at your service. PPK offers trackside support at all of the CKNA South Division events, the CKNA majors, such as the Spring Nationals and the Grand Nationals, the Sunshine State Karting Challenge, and a number of club races in the Southeast. PPK also has an impressive driver roster at these events, racking up multiple wins and podiums in 2021 with longtime Coyote Motorsports driver Chris Carroll and KC Happy Hour Zone Paulie Massimino and Brandon Jarsakrak. If you're looking to get on the same race winning equipment as these drivers, from the Coyote Motorsports chassis to the Odenthal motor mounts and Greyhound racing seats, Precision Performance Karting has you covered. Check out Precision Performance Karting on Facebook and Instagram or email them at ppkartingfl at gmail.com. There's a new engine program on the block that's already begun winning races. Speed Lab Racing Engines has already racked up wins in X30 classes at the U.S. Pro Kart Series and Rock GP classes at the most recent Rock Vegas event. Headed up by names you can trust, such as longtime engine builder Mario Lafredo and industry veteran Mike Speed, Speed Lab Racing Engines has quickly become the engine of choice for a number of top teams in the sport, most recently servicing the entire Rollison Performance Group and Speed Concepts Racing Operations at Rock Vegas, and also servicing the likes of J.C. Karting and Mike Doty Racing. It won't be long before this engine program gets a wait list with his resume already filling up with wins, so make sure to reach out and get your tune-up by emailing them at speedlabracingengines at gmail.com. So we have a little more we want to break into, and I always get, you know, uh, obviously onto Polly's case quite a bit, and it's been noticed enough, so Polly, I want to have you be the first one to break it down. <laughs> Um, you were on the sidelines this weekend, but you got to see the track race and, and you were coaching a lot of guys. So first thoughts, both on the, on the racetrack and anything specifically that kind of stood out to you from, from any other racetrack where you're just teaching guys to hit apexes and not fall backwards. Uh, yeah, honestly, before I left, I looked at, I looked at the track. I thought it was going to be pretty boring, but, um, <laughs> when I got there on Thursday, Walk the track. Still thought it was going to be boring, but as soon as the racing, as soon as the racing started, it was very hard to get away. Um, like in the in the junior class, the minis, you, you had a bunch of guys up there contending for the win. Not so much in the senior, uh, not so much in the senior class, because everyone behind Jake, I think, got a little starstruck, so they started racing it up. But um, <laughs> but no, Jake was very fast. He he was still going to be up there no matter what. Um, so I thought it was I thought it was good. It looked like a good track once the racing started. It'd have been it would have been cool maybe to put some laps in, see how it how it was. Definitely a lot of not really any any hard braking, just kinda being smooth. You had to be very smooth, I felt like. Um couldn't really miss corners. But other than that, I thought I thought it was very nice very nice track. Nice asphalt. Um I didn't know. I don't really know how how much the grip was down. I don't. I want. I don't want to say it was. Where can you miss corners? 
Probably the background Probably the, the peanut gallery behind Brandon throwing him off a little bit. But yeah, uh, I, I mean, what what do you think, Jake? I mean, you know that the. the the turnout was, uh, I think, about a buck twenty-five, ain't pushing buck forty overall. But for the most part, outside of the two shifter classes, everybody, well, no, the little console, the one tire, right? It's just a single tire brand. Mm-hmm. How how the rubber come down? Yeah, so the you know the first day and a half that I was there, Friday and halfway through Saturday, the grip I felt really wasn't coming down. It was just so windy and cold that it just wasn't taking effect. Um, as soon as the wind stopped for the pre-final on Saturday, like just on the outlap, I could tell the grip was really starting to come down and uh, all the way through to the end of Sunday, the track was developing really nicely. And I really enjoyed how the grip was coming down. Um, it just, honestly, I think it made our package that much better. Uh, and it just had to be that much more precise and smooth and uh, not to kill the momentum in the hundred CC. And uh, you know, we had the power there and the chassis was there and we just kept getting stronger as the grip came down. Well, Jake, we'll let you go here because we know that you're obviously still at work and we held you a little bit later. So, um, first of all, big congrats, of course, on the win to start the season. We're happy to see you still getting to to race go-karts and how motivated you are to come back and uh, to get back behind the wheel. Um, Obviously, you're going for the title. you got 11 car races, a lot of go-kart races, hopefully, this year. We hope to see you a whole lot more and this time actually get you some more merch than just your bottle opener that we've got for you. We'll make sure we hook that up. Um. But any other closing comments you got out of that weekend getting to go back to Tucson and run there again? Because you've run Dakota for a couple seasons now still. Yeah. Um, no, I just want to say a big thank you to Gary and Tony and everybody involved with uh, the program this weekend. I had a good time. Um, look forward to doing as many as we can. Uh, of course, uh, Andy and everybody at Rock Cup uh, does a good job with Challenge Americas. I always enjoy going there the beginning months of the year. and Just kind of it's a good way to kick off the year. Sweet. Well, thanks again, Jake, for coming on the show, buddy. We appreciate you. We'll let you head on out of here. And uh, Gary, I want to switch gears a little bit too. Obviously, um, you know, your, your resume speaks more than for itself, you know, as a driver all the way through, you know, uh, American going over as a European factory uh, driver for years and years and years as a professional karting driver. And then now you're back in the scene again, full-time in the U S for the last few years, you've had, you know, national level success, obviously this past weekend, which was great. Uh, but you're in on the club side too. And we talk a lot about the club stuff and that's been a big focus of our, our shows really the last few weeks. So um, what does your schedule look like? Cause you're obviously up at Sonoma and you do so much testing. And I think that's the thing that a lot of people don't even realize how little your time off is. Right. And that's why I wanted to make the joke about the vacation because you're, it's probably almost every weekend still at the racetrack between now and the next one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's natural. I think in anything business wise too, if you don't, put the effort in you're not going to be able to see it and i think what makes us different than everybody else is they necessarily get developed products sent to them where you know if tony car or crg be it all these companies they're sitting out there and developing products overseas and then they get it sent to them well we're having to do it here and we're doing it ourselves so that time gets added on from just the normal testing and you know driver development days so yeah, it does take a lot more time and, and a lot more work. But then again, I, it's what I want to do, what I enjoy doing. And then it's always the thing of, I think, you know, an example is everyone just waits and waits to see what comes out for the next year or, or the new models. And, and they hope it suits their driving style. I hope it, it goes better where at least with us, we know exactly what we're getting and we know if it's going to be better for the tires or the tracks that we're, we're at or, or not. And uh, as a driver turned team owner, Brandon is already halfway down that path with quite a bit going. Do you have any advice for Brandon? And Brandon, I want to have you ask some questions here for Gary, if you've got any, or is the advice just to not get involved and stay driving and stay <laughs> playing the game? Uh, I guess the, the biggest thing is if you like your free time, then don't do it because you won't have any. <laughs> you won't have any. Um, and then being able to work with, I mean, I guess it depends on what, what he's trying to do. If you're developing products, it's one thing, but if you're working with like more of a management role and dealing with the customers and everything, it's the thing of you, you're not a taco. You're not going to make everyone happy. That's just, that's just, the, just the long and short of it. I mean, people, some people are going to, are going to vibe with what you're doing. And I mean, you're going to have good weekends. You're going to have bad weekends and how you, how you react to those bad weekends is going to be, uh, going to be, 
your level of success, really. I mean, the good weekends, everyone's happy. That's that's great. That's easy, but it's the bad weekends and keeping people motivated and keeping people on the right track. That's going to be your your challenge. Right. Brandon, your biggest challenge right now, at least the last couple of days, was trying to get your tent in town. Have you even had yeah. time to think more and more about your program this year? Because like Gary said, it seems like your free time just going more and more away. Yeah, I mean, I definitely, uh, definitely agree with Gary on that one. The free time just keeps going less and less. Um, I was kind of lucky. I actually did take most of January off and uh, just decide not to go to some of the races so I could do a little bit more planning for uh, next year and try and get everything organized for um, for my team, which we're mainly just going to do uh, all the club races at GoPro and then the uh, Stars Championship. And then all my customers will still be supported at the uh, all the national stuff like USPKS and SCUSA through uh, Mike Doty still um, kind of going in kind of like a partnership with him. And then obviously still doing the uh, four cycle stuff with John Seglum at Precision. Um, kind of developing the Coyote chassis there. We did a little bit of work last year with it and think we got it in a good place now. So still racing a little bit with that and offering arrive and drive and support with that. But um, other than that, yeah, I mean, I was lucky I did get, get some time to plan, but still trying to get my tent, uh, for this club race because i have a lot of people at the first club race and not enough tent space right now <laughs> and the last thing gary before you go um you know i mean you're again talking about you've you've got some experience in this sport that that very few americans and very few people have had especially with the path that you've taken as a driver um and and now business owner um and uh i think what's the most interesting to me is seeing how big of a lifestyle change it's been over the last you know, five years. I mean, what your life looked like over living overseas, being a full-time driver over there, and then still working in many different ways in the sport. And then now you're managing your own program. What do you think's like changed with your life? And do you feel more control, less control, more time, less time? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, when I had to change, it wasn't like by choice. I mean, cause obviously I was deported and, and then had to deal with all that. <laughs> so I basically had like my whole life. Yeah over in over in europe and then you know from one day to the next like okay like you can't live there anymore and your whole life your apartment and everything was my, my apartment and everything was over there and so i had to start from zero um i'd say you know at the beginning i thought like oh man this is a lot of work and this is really hard and then, then i sit back here and like laugh like oh my god you know, like if i had that amount of workload now i mean it'd be extremely easy but just like anything i guess when you're when you're new at something you're new at driving you think oh you know to drive i don't know a two or six or when you jump into a tag oh this is really this is a lot to handle i don't know how people do this and then you laugh two years later because you're like oh you know now you're jumping into the shipper car like it's more or less you know the same thing for you probably saw the same thing when you when you started your podcast and everything else like it seemed like a lot now it probably is really easy um but lifestyle change i mean yeah i mean you just you have no time but i mean then again, I could make time, but I wouldn't because I'd want to be working anyways. And and it's how much you want to put into your program is literally going to reflect on your results and where you want to go. And I mean, I, I dream big. I mean, when I was being a, a driver, I mean, I, I won some national championships here in the U.S. And my immediate goal was not to continue doing that, it was just go to go to Europe and try to do something big over there. And it's the same with with my company and my brand, I mean, naturally I wanted to start out and, you know, gain some local traction and, and selling chassis. But I mean, the, the end goal is to be having a brand that's recognized around the world and have world presence and European presence and, and obviously presence in, the, in North America. And yeah, you know, obviously, you know, they say an overnight success usually takes around seven to 10 years. And then, and then that's just it. I mean, I think we've had a lot of success and I've been really fortunate to have so much success really early, but I mean, my, my goals are, are much further beyond than what we're, where we're at now. And we're going to continue to do that. And I'm, I'm going to work as hard as I can to re reach the goal that I, I think we can make. Well, Gary, we're going to let, uh, let it off on that note, which I think is a great way to send it off. And uh, obviously big fans of all the stuff that you've done, all the stuff that you continue to do. So thanks again for carving out time in the busy schedule. We'll let you go get back to 
work, I'm sure, and uh, hopefully having yourself a nice little night here tonight. We'll see you around the racetrack here really soon, buddy. All right, guys. See ya. Thank you. Again, as we uh, move around here, we'll be bringing in John Seglum in just a moment. We did have a little bit of news come out over the course over the week. Obviously, first and foremost, the Scusa Winter Series is coming up. That'll be the next broadcast event we got. That's two weeks away. Um, they've got registration <laughs> open. There's the championship and points. You'll see a bunch of posts coming out of it um, as we get ready to get back going. We head out to Homestead very, very soon. Um, the U.S. Pro Kart Series put out their uh, first bit of promotional material for their opening weekend in Orlando. Um, that's going to come at the beginning of March. They've got registration open. I think I got a text yesterday. They were already up to 130 entries on the first weekend. Scoos is obviously probably going to push way over 200, which like Brandon said, a lot of guys took that first race off. So the shifter class is going to be a little bit bigger, which will be cool. Um, and then everyone's just kind of getting ready, which is the, the USPKS, uh, you know, is the week before the Florida winter tour, but it's kind of an unofficial kickoff to the regular season for the, the national, uh, schedule. Um, with Challenge of the Americas wrapping up, and then everybody focuses both on this and then on the Scusa Pro Tour, on the especially on the two-stroke side. But we switch over to four-stroke. We bring in here, who's been patiently waiting, Mr. John Seglum. John, first of all, thank you so much for joining the show once again. We've got a lot of fun stuff to uh, get into before you head up to North Florida this week. Uh, anytime. Happy to be here. Yeah, so John joins us, of course, partner of the show for Precision Performance Karting, which we got to uh, get some more notice out there, not just for what you're doing, but how big of a program you and Brandon have together here this year coming up. Um, for Monticello, and we've showed it uh, here when we were originally going over uh, the the uh, massive uh, debate of where the Scusa Winter Series was going to go and, and how cool of a racetrack this racetrack really is. This track was um, designed – I, I'd always forget. I'm pretty sure it was John Paul Montoya's father was involved, um, but a beautiful racetrack with not a lot for facility. And we were looking at the weather this weekend, John, and all of a sudden you were puckering a little bit on the phone here today because it, it doesn't look too pretty. No, uh, unfortunately, it looks like uh, it's going to be a wet Friday. Um, should be a clear Saturday and a cool Sunday, so... Brandon, I promise I will not forget the filter cover. <laughs> uh, I hope not this time. <laughs> I'll make sure. It's no more heartbreak. On every session. <laughs> yeah. There you go. No more heartbreak. There we go. Yeah, Brandon, you get to race this week. You, uh, Paulie, you drove Monticello last year, right? You went and ran the event, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I did. The track's uh, track's fun. The facility not so nice, but the track the track's a nice track. The track's cool. Were you at, at all worried about going off or getting sent in the weeds to the Gators? We joke that you're the one that sends people. So are you trying to send people into the pond at the end of the racetrack? Very no, close. Uh, I was more worried about. <laughs> oh. uh, I was more worried about if I was going to get bit by a snake in the bathroom. So. <laughs> oh, it's like an old style yeah, outhouse out there, one, is it? That was the one warning Polly gave me was uh, make sure to watch myself. <laughs> In the bathroom. <laughs> Hi, Tony. Oh, we have to make a sign for this. It says, we love Brandon. I, I can't even remember. Uh, we love you, Brandon. You're number one. You won a four-cycle race this year. <laughs> Hi, Tony. All right, Tony. Oh, happy now. Goodness. The, uh, you know, kind of getting back to the facility – I think it's uh, probably one of the some of the nicer asphalt in Florida. The, the track layout is great. There's a little bit of elevation change. You kind of go up a hill a little bit of carousel. Uh, you know, at, at the the bottom part of the scene here, that is uh, you're you are going up a hill a little bit. You go through that right hand carousel, and it's almost like an off camber uh, downhill. Um, you know, and you end up, you know, it's some degree corner, you know, you end up going in the opposite direction. Um, so that's kind of a cool area. Um, other than that, it totally flows well. Uh, but yeah, you know, the, uh, the facility, um, if yeah, they invested a little bit of money, they could probably have one of the best facilities, uh, in the state of Florida. Um, you know, I mean, it, it I really like the place. I've, I've had a chance to drive it a couple of so it, it was a fun track to run. Yeah, it, it reminds me a lot of, uh, of Pittsburgh, especially with the last sector with uh, 
the the elevation they have and then the switchback hairpins over there. One thing that that always is interesting when series go there is how they do the starts, right? And you guys were down there, Polly, you you especially. Um, did they start them going down into that hairpin uh, at the top right corner? Or did they have you guys going into that right le- or left right chicane um, on the right hand side when they were doing them last year? Uh, the the think- start finish line. <laughs> Yeah, the start yeah, finish. Think, uh, check out what that light tent is. Gotcha. Yeah, so they'll, they'll start you down there too, right? Because I know some of the there's some old yep. videos you can find online of the the uh, the Florida the FKCS <laughs> series, the old Florida State series, where they they had such a big field in some of the classes that didn't seem like they'd always start them down there, but they started you guys going right into there, and it was decent. Yeah, I felt like it was fine. I never crashed out, so <laughs> yeah, right on into the hairpin. So. Um, <laughs> uh this weekend um again the i think the you know and you and i talked about it a good bit john you know i mean the series has a, a good bit of momentum it made it through right its first year which is always the biggest thing for any series is trying to just survive the first season financially and get some numbers because uh, uh, you have a, a diehard following that normally can get started up for a series but if it's starting kind of out of from scratch you have so many people on the sidelines waiting to jump in and i didn't look at the exact entry count but i know at least a good bunch of the classes are looking at double digit numbers which is pretty good for an event at the beginning of florida or at the beginning of february in north florida where it's not necessarily like what we've been used to in central and south even yeah i've got to push um probably about nine entries um with uh again the biggest class i think is like junior sitting around 15 to 18 um and and sportsmen far behind. I mean, it's always good to see the junior classes up there in numbers because obviously that really tells you, you know, the health uh, of the and things. And touch back on, you know, the success of the series and the direction of going. I mean, it, it, it's a big credit to Greg Jesperson, Steve Vermeer, and Brett Spotty. Um, I know that Brett reached out to a number of different competitors on a regular basis uh, to get their feedback, whether it be format. Um, so, you know, it, it's, they, they care. There's a little bit of that customer service mentality uh, where they want a series to succeed. And um, it, it, you know, it seems to be going well now. Right. And you've got a, uh, you know, arrive and drives for every race Brandon's at. Brandon gets to do all the hand holding with all the arrive and drives and they show up and they say Brandon didn't prep a cart good and it's Brandon's fall and he just tuned them wrong. Brandon, uh, are you looking forward to more of that this year? Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's definitely something exciting. It's uh, a new opportunity kind of, I mean, I've done a little bit of it in the past, not quite the arrive and drive, but obviously done a lot of tuning and coaching in the past and it's a good opportunity with starting my new business. Um, it's a good partner to work with, with John. He, uh, he's really good supporting me and, um, I think it will, we'll be able to do good. We're not offering it for we're offering it for a decent amount of races this year, just the club races and then the stars and then the last two cup carts races at new Orleans and obviously the grands at Newcastle. Um, hopefully next year we can ramp it up to a, a couple more races and hopefully get, get some people interested. <clears throat> And doing more of the four cycle stuff, you know, over the last year and a half. I mean, there's obviously it's a, it's a whole different in a lot of ways. It's the same. It's still karting. It's still racing. Uh, but when you go to, you know, even series that don't have the extra the the extra level of like glitz and glam and master big rig haulers. Right. Um, and you get to run especially more regional championships and stuff like that. Um, how different is that felt? Have you felt it's it's different going from running a race with John and running a CKNA event to running a four cycle event or club race and um, both on track and then off track stuff you've noticed, or, you know, do you look forward to them, especially going back to them more? I mean, yeah, I definitely look forward to them. I think I honestly like everyone uh, kind of harps on four cycle racing a little bit. And I honestly think four cycle racing is very difficult. It's difficult in a different way from like our two cycle racing. Like there's a lot more in like cart setup and, a little bit more in driving where you can't make a mistake and the motor won't pull you out of the mistakes that you make. So I, I like that part of it. And then I also like the parts of like the people that are there and like the way the pits are, like there's not those big tents. It kind of reminds me of like the days when I was growing up racing 10 years ago when we'd go to the, to the big races and there'd just be 
maybe like five carts max under a tent and not the big the big teams you didn't have to be under a big team to to go fast back then and that's kind of how i feel like ckna is doing it and i think that's good it's bringing more people into the sport and showing that you can kind of just come and race and be competitive i mean it definitely helps being under a tent it'll get you up to speed quicker but you still can come race and be competitive by yourself i just like it because it's more of like you see more families doing it together instead of like the parents just drop their kids off at the racetrack and hire a tuner and and go on and do something else with their day. I like seeing the families together doing the racing. He says with 16 drivers under his tent at the first go -Go club race, right? 18. <laughs> 18. We've gone up. Yeah, Mr. Big Ten over here, Mr. Anti-Big Ten's become, become the villain, right? The, the end yeah. of the story, the full arc. Yeah. But, I mean, no, I like what I'm saying, yeah, yeah the tent definitely helps you, but – like I like yeah. seeing people do it by themselves because that's how I started doing it. And um, eventually then I moved to the, moved to a team with Mike Doty racing and that ramped up my learning curve a lot, but I originally started just doing it. Me and my dad. Right. Paulie, um, you're scaring me over there. I, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that was perfect. <laughs> uh, you well, you run sad. those races too. You've been around club races, and especially this this next year, right? You're moving into just as much as you're driving now, even more so last year. But um, you know, this year too, being a coaching more guys new in the sport at the ground level and being an ambassador for it. I mean, the the experience that you've learned kind of coming in has that kind of brought you back? Have you? Because it, it's so easy when we get wrapped up, right, to forget you know, what it's like at the, at the base level of the pyramid and what it's like when people first come in and the questions they have, you spent so much time at GoPro and then obviously running regional events last year. Does that kind of help ground you in a way when you come back to bigger shows? Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I definitely miss when it was just, um, when it was my dad working on my cart and, you know, me just not really knowing what was going on and just jumping in and trying to drive it. Um, but yeah, I definitely, it, it definitely brings back memories like, because when I work with a bunch of people over here, it's usually their their dad that uh, tries to work on the go-kart. And um, they just, I, I don't know, it just brings back memories of when me and my dad used to do it over at uh, CMP and Cadet and a little bit in junior. Um, I've always said if, if my dad could come back in tune, I would take him over anyone. So hopefully he's watching and decides to quit his job and uh, we'll go on the road. <laughs> but no, that's that's – I mean, four cycles kind of like that. Obviously, it wasn't like that for me. I I partnered, not partnered. I uh, joined John's team, and obviously, I had a tuner. My dad still couldn't make it out. But I mean, you look around the pits. Everybody's so close. Everybody's so friendly. Um, honestly, I loved being at the four cycle races with John. Uh, whenever Brandon would show up, I mean, you had the Carols. It, everybody's just great people over there. We always have fun um they drink you know i don't i'm not old enough but they all <laughs> right. drink and uh i just uh sit on my Capri son but and then we uh go to dinner and duty all again the next day so it's all a good time and i kind of wish i could do that again just me and my dad show up in a back of pickup truck like we used to and uh have fun yeah it's uh it's cool. It's getting, and, and, you know, that's a big part of what we get to do with the show a little bit more is talk to more and more guys from around the sport and more regional stuff. We were hoping to get a, a few others here on this one, and we're going to have a few interviews lined up over the next few weeks where we'll have a few more guys in the club scene as well, even just beyond regional racing like CKNA South or like, um, you know, the Route 66 or Texas State Series that we're covering the ICP Cup in the Northwest, but club stuff across the country um, and using this platform to give these guys more and more reach. So, we're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we'll have a little bit more of just rehashing old memories and having some fun. And then uh, also, of course, uh, at the very end, we'll make sure to show you guys that new St. Petersburg shirt, take ourselves a little bit of a break, and we'll keep hyping up uh, all the events we got coming up. So stick with us, folks. One more commercial break, a little bit more. We'll stay uh, live on the air here for KC Happy Hour. Cart Store USA is a cart parts supplier that racers and retailers can count on when they need reliable advice and service. We focus on servicing all racers with honesty and pride while maintaining customer satisfaction. We carry a full stock of Kart Republic and Tony Kart chassis, as well as IAMI and Vortex Rock engines. We've also got a host of other parts available and in stock, 
such as products from Rev Performance Materials, Jekko Racing Seats, and more. We have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. And on top of that, if your order exceeds $200, shipping is on us. Check out all we have to offer today by visiting us online at cartstore-usa.com. As the Western importer of the Praga and Formula K chassis brands, Leading Edge Motorsports is a high-performance kart shop and race team with a simple mission. Teach others the joy of high-performance driving, supply our customers with the highest quality products and services, and most of all, win races. With our remarkable racing inventory, expert services, and top-ranked national-level team to back it up, we'll help to get your new kart racing package up and running fast. From arrive and drive service to kart preparation and driver coaching to the parts you need to get you back on the racetrack, Leading Edge Motorsports is the industry answer. Hi, I'm Billy Vincent, owner of MPG Motorsports. What we do at MPG is we try to keep it a, a nice, fun family atmosphere, uh, try to combine sort of the, the bigger things and the, of the bigger teams and the professionalism down with sort of some of the fun sort of family-oriented uh, atmosphere. We try to not only develop drivers, but also the parents and the families um, for just the knowledge in general in motorsports. It all starts in karting. What we try to do is, is try to help the drivers, the moms, the dads understand the sport of motorsports in general, not just karting, but what it takes to get all the way up through. Uh, whether you end up wanting to be a driver or a mechanic or an engineer, you know, we can help you with that, and that's what we're here for. If you're interested in joining us at MPG, our home base is at Whiteland Raceway Park in Indianapolis, and you can contact us at info at willpowercart.com, and one of our great people will reach out to you, and, and we'll try to put the best program together. All right, so we are back here from commercial, and we, 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 we got it right before, and it wouldn't be a show if we didn't uh, poke some fun at just at Polly's expense. So, Brandon, can you bring over Tony really fast? All right, Tony, come here. I need you to translate for him really quickly what we just heard from Polly, which was that he'd much rather have his dad. He's better, and mainly Tony's <laughs> tuner. All right, here, take it. Right, ahead. So we want me. Tony's response to hearing that he – here we go. Tony, All Polly right. just said you were the worst tuner he has ever had, and he wants I, – I want to hear your response that he says his dad's – you know, he wished he'd had his dad, but he can't stand having you as a tuner. Well, that's why he won a lot of championships with me. <laughs> <laughs> That's about as PC as I've ever heard you, Tony. Where are you? Uh, your head's right out. <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, let's be good, honest. Man. Let's be honest. I, I love Tony having him as a tuner, but I, I always told him to, you know, like if my dad could tune, you know, I've always told Tony he's number two. Yep, he has told me that. <laughs> We'll let you go, Tony. Thanks for coming over. You can go All back right, to your guys. sign making. Have a good night. All right, good night. <laughs> I'm gonna go back to watching it on the iPad over there. Oh my god! I, yeah, it's um. He's gonna renew the listing on those techno wheels that seem to pop up every other day. <laughs> <laughs> Someone will buy him, Tony. He did say he did say during the commercial break though. He when he went to Jacksonville because he worked uh, the cup car race at Jacksonville for John, and he said he, he really. Missed me. He enjoyed it, and because it did remind him of like back in the day, it was a lot of father sons and families, and he said it was it was cool, cool to see. Back in the day, that was like seventy years ago. I know <laughs> it's hard for him to remember, but you know, most mo most people don't know that Tony, Chris, Carroll, and I, you know, raced together in uh, New York in the late eighties, late eighties, <laughs> early nineties. <90s. laughs> Going back. No, I don't know no, what he's laughing at right now because uh, because the computer's delayed like ten seconds, so he's probably laughing at the techno Facebook joke right now. <laughs> <laughs> Check that on back there. No, it's it's cool, right? And that's I think the the secret to the success for a lot of those up and coming series is trying to manage that because the perception's so so big. I mean, even it's it's tougher and tougher at the bigger stuff because obviously there's even more and more smarter guys not Tony, sometimes Tony, that are <laughs> under the big tents and uh, and know how to get go-karts tuned and engines tuned. But, um, you know, for the most part, everyone's on the same product that you can buy under the big tent or, or without it. Uh, but at least those series and CKNA is the, the secret, I think, to the grands is, is you still have. And you can see it at that event. And we talked about it a little bit even in our show after it, that the paddock fencing that they have at Newcastle over the facility was moved in a way different spot than where we were for – any big USPKS or SKUs event there, the total number of drivers was about the same when you take out the double entries, but you had 
way less individual pedestrian car parking or just individual just rental cars and stuff like that. And you had way more individual trucks connected to trailers and RVs. I mean, it was a pilgrimage uh, for that event and a lot how karting used to be and still is in a lot of ways. And we forget about it sometimes when we get focused on the ever developing, you know, pro national scene or, or scene that a lot of our stuff goes to, but having events where you still show up as a family and run as a family, I think is massive. So Polly, what, what is this coming here? You got it. Why are you turning the lights down? <laughs> Casper the ghost. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't know. They're lighting. Chris is lighting in his houses. It's not too good. So. <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday, well, Chris. Shout out to Chris. Happy birthday. Yeah. Happy birthday, Chris. Um, uh, Big supporter of us, and we we love you, Chris. Uh, Chris Nockman here. Happy birthday, of course, to him. Happy birthday. <laughs> 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 just keep on coming in. Um, we did have uh, one comment earlier, and I, I should have kept Gary on for this one because this kept coming over and over and over again. And uh, it's funny putting Gary on the spot. I'm not going to answer for him, but we'll have to bring him on here to answer exactly what GFC stands for. I didn't notice a bald spot as the account. <laughs> Let's just put that up there one more time just to show Connor we still love him. Here. I wish I could pull that one up more. We need to do that again. Oh, my God. Yeah, hey, hey Xander, Xander, one other uh, bit of uh, news that came out. Uh, this week regarding uh, kind of four cycle world WKA 206 series, which 206 series. Uh, apparently, it will be including a lot more of the vintage guys. <clears throat> I think there's going to be either a class or two, um, and that'll be Charlotte, Barnesville, Jacksonville. Um, so it sounds like there's going to be a little bit uh, of a permanent home again for the. Uh, for the vintage guys, the old flathead guys. Right, because that was the big part of the Maxis series. Was they took them in and had had vintage four-cycle classes, which was a movement that started about three or four years ago with old flatheads and beyond. And they're, like you said, naming it Gold Cup. And I will say, again, I'm ragging them a lot, and everybody loves to rag on them because they've been around. I mean, that's just what happens when you get big enough. You start getting uh, people wanting to tear you down a little bit. Um but, you know, WK listened and that not only in that, there was the comment that was on that post that said that they were going to be looking at trying to have a builder's four cycle class come back, which if they if they handle that right, I think that's great for four cycle racing to have a little bit of a self pyramid because we've touched on it a little bit here. You know, as great as it is having Brandon and Polly and Corey Tolls and Colin Warren come and run 206 stuff, it kind of defeats the purpose of what's supposed to be a very entry level class and a a motor that originally started with the name is LO206 or local option, right? And if you have a, a tier above that in the pyramid where you can put your better drivers and your hardcore guys into it and and obviously have a great way for builders to shine, then you kind of open it up as your 206 still being a lights program where that's your Saturday warrior that pulls the go-kart out Saturday morning and it went in there Saturday night to the trailer or the back of the truck or the garage and hadn't been touched since, you know, versus your, your full-time racers and so forth. Uh, and have you heard any more rumblings on that as well, or just seeing the comment? I mean, I, I know it was cool to see. Is it something you'd like to see too, come back a bit more of an open or something above a 206 for the four-cycle stuff? You know, uh, the time when animals were big was kind of the time that I was away from the sport. So I'm not too familiar with the animal package. But listen, I, I myself, like anybody else, I love the smell of methanol. So um, a – a, a, a methanol animal class that has a little bit of a uh, of a of a builder more than just the, more than just a preparation, uh, you know, an, an actual building a built class, you know, where maybe the bottom end isn't sealed. You can do more to the head, more to the carb. Uh, you know, I know that there's a super stock rules package uh, that somebody in the Midwest uh, has developed. Maybe they they bring that over. But, you know, obviously there's going to be something that has a set of rules associated with it already. Um, I was speaking with somebody today and they're like, you know, what if they bring the limited modified flathead engine and they put it on a modern car? You know, but now we're back to uh, $2,500, $3,000 engines that can let loose at any minute. <laughs> so. Right. As cool as it is. And I don't know that. Yeah. 
I, I'm, I'm not too sure how much Briggs wants to um, support too much flathead stuff. Uh, a lot of the parts that are out there are legacy parts. Um, and I don't believe that they're manufacturing. Uh, I, I think everything now is aftermarket. So, <clears throat> yeah, for sure. It's, um, I don't know. It'd be interesting to see. I, I wasn't around really much for that era. Uh, it was even really before my time when the flatheads were, were running strong and were good for the sport and you had tiers of them too. Right. But, um, it'd be good. And, and again, I just want to applaud them for at least, you know, number one, listening to what the people were commenting and telling them um, and trying to do something more than just a carbon copy of another series, because, you know, we touched on it a little bit last week, anyone that does that, whether it's copying an engine program that works or going to a market that's already built up and just trying to do what the other guy did that built it up, which the sport has a, a bad history of doing to itself, you know, over and over and over again. Um, when no one necessarily asked for a change besides a vocal minority of a guy that probably got kicked out of that series and wants to have another series so he can go to that one. So kudos to them for that. You're right. Big news with them doing it, and it'll be something we'll keep our eye on as it develops more, and it'd be good to see them at least continue to branch out like we talked in depth about last week. That there's still so many smaller tracks that may be a little bit awkward to put a shifter or, or, or an, even an X30 or 125 on but you could put a 206 on and it races even better because you take a lot of the drafting out of it up in the, you know, the mid Atlantic, you have places like Sandy hook and Nicholson. You've got a bunch of small classic tracks, you know, kind of like a Barnesville um, that could hold those races along with all the big, big tracks that already host big races and give them a little bit of love and help their community. Cause anytime a track gets a touring series to come, I mean, it boosts the whole club for almost the whole year. You know, I mean, it's, I'm sure Paulie's dad would have a big uh, grin on his face if uh, Paulie went out and ran like a, a limited modified in a modern car, because I think that's what Paulie's dad used to run, if I'm not mistaken. Really? Uh, can... Too bad he probably wouldn't show up. So. <laughs> <laughs> He's busy for me now. Oh. Oh, man. He just pays for it. Oh, yeah, he just pays for it pretty much. <laughs> Barnesville's not too far. No, yeah, me and Brandon were having that man. talk. About the stars races, if my dad would come in tune, I said he wouldn't come out there. He wouldn't. He don't even come watch me race anymore. So, <laughs> well, enough of the daddy issues here for now. We'll go ahead and start to wrap this one up <laughs> and move on to uh, a, a big thanks. Of course, John, thanks so much for coming on the show, buddy. It's good having you here, and we appreciate the support. I got. I got to get a shameless plug in if that's okay. Want. Go for it. Like a shameless plug in. All right. Uh, just uh, thanks to uh, David ah. and Alex. David and Alex Odenthal for uh, jumping on board. They're going to uh, uh, be with us full-time now. Uh, Odenthal Mounts, uh, they're going to be working with Brandon. And I know that uh, we're looking forward to that relationship uh, taking off. Well, congrats, Just plug guys, over. Nice partnership. Yeah, yeah, go for it, man. Well, thanks again. We appreciate you coming Wait, wait, on, wait, 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 wait. What? Next time, John, when you come on, make sure you're not at McDonald's, man. That Wi-Fi is trash. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. It's a hard wire connection. I'm at Starbucks anyway. It's, <laughs> it's yeah. really it's uh, it's hard they, wired. It don't sound it. like it. I think it's or it might be that it might be that Indian like... scammer Mike. I don't know. <laughs> I know I gotta I gotta sell car warranties as soon as we get <laughs> off here. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you so much for coming on the show here john all right man take it easy guys see yeah. y'all there we go oh cut him off a little bit whoops anyway well, let's uh let's go through here because we did have some more comments come in the last few so this was all so we, we put the comments up there right um you know for for gfc and uh while it's fun to know what it really is, we've had even better comments come on in of, uh, you know, guys uh, asking or, you know, figuring out his middle name. So I don't know. Ferdinand would be good. Maybe for Gary Fernando Carlton would be. What are you doing, Paulie? <laughs> oh, I'm bored because we already know what it means. So we could just skip past it. Or Obviously not. Connor's bald spot doesn't know. Yeah, half our viewers don't. Do know I need to tell them or like what? No, probably not. <laughs> no, you've done enough to nearly get us canceled off the air, Paulie. We can't do that. I, I guess it's like to act when you barely talk to me, you know? Act up. I, I've given you so many times to talk here this show. That That's unfair. 
It's just me and Brandon on here. I think we're about to have to throw down. <laughs> oh, okay. So, see, I don't think Brandon cares to. I think he'd rather just climb into bed with Tony right there in the hotel. Who are you cuddling <laughs> with tonight, Brandon? I saw three guys in that room. No one. We went and bought an air mattress for uh, for the third guy because they wouldn't oh, give us nice. a cot. I guess it's a fire hazard to have a cot in the in with two beds in the room. You must be really. Where are you in Homestead? Do you get to the Motel Six or the Homestead Inn? No, I'm at the Hampton Inn actually. Really, and no cots. Yeah, no, they Holy have shit. cots, but they don't let you put it in the double bedroom. Mm. Because if you see our setup right now, there is no way you can get out of this room if there's a fire. Mm. But it'll Good. be all right. <laughs> 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 I'll just go out the window. Oh gosh. Well, before we sign off the show, we did promise, of course, the debut of the St. Petersburg T-shirt that we got. So for those of you tuning in, that's this will now be available here starting right after the end of this show. We'll get it up on our Square Store limited design. Of course, we have uh, the restock of the Miami shirts for one final time for anyone that wants to take a look at those. Uh, before we uh, close off sales on the Miami shirts, we'll wrap that up at the end of the Supercars USA Winter Series weekend. For anyone tuning in here for the St. Petersburg shirt. I'd love to do another giveaway like we did at the beginning of our stream. So if you're watching this show before or after and you want a chance to win one of these nice St. Petersburg shirts, give us the best uh, name we've got for GFC and we're going to point it out. So put it in the comments here. Should it be Gary Ferdinand Car uh, Carlton, Gary Fernando Carlton, Gary Francis Carlton, any of the F words besides uh, well, the, the cuss word. So if I yeah, say what it actually part means, part do I win or no? No, Paul, you lose. You don't – Paulie hasn't gotten merch for a reason here. This is why. <laughs> trying to but seriously, merch. anyone watching the show them. after, comment your uh, best, funniest, fakest GFC slogan, <laughs> and uh, we'll be giving away one of these shirts here before we get going. We'll leave this open here for one full week again for a St. Petersburg KC t-shirt, and if you end up buying it to make sure that you reserve one, we'll go ahead and refund you, send you that, send you some KC stickers, maybe a KC bottle opener to match Take True as well. Uh, final thoughts here, guys, before we get off the air. Paul, you've gotten the most airtime you have in like a month, so you got to be happy this with this. Most I've there. heard him talk in forever. It's I been know, amazing. So I'll be skipping uh, he was getting, a month of the show now. He was <laughs> getting real in depth with the the surface of the Tucson track. Yeah, that was that was and very professional, you Paulie. I know. I got to step up my game a little bit. I gotta. I'm getting to that time where it's time to get yeah, out the carts and. You know, gonna I mean, I'm not going to be a Brandon or anything, but uh, I, I don't know. I'm expecting a um, 401k retirement plan from Brandon. So Jeez. we'll have to sign an agreement, get our uh, lawyers involved and uh, go from there. Thoughts, Brandon? I don't know why Brandon's laughing. I'm not joking. <laughs> I'll find it. I got my coach. lawyer, my accountant. I got my dad. All right, see ya. <laughs> <laughs> new coach, new coaching coming. I don't know. I'm hearing 18 at the club race, so it's probably be about 20. So I'm expecting at least 900 a day. That seems fair. Nope, not gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let these two guys hash it out here, guys. As always, thank you so much for tuning in to KC Happy Hour. We will talk to you guys soon, and we'll let Polly get some rest because obviously he's a little bit tired, and he did a whole lot of talking tonight. So we're going to let that one go. We'll tune in again. See you guys next Tuesday here live on the air. Casey Happy Hour, Brandon Charscrack, Paulie Massimino, and my name is Andrew Clements. Thank you guys for tuning in.